All right, everybody, welcome back. This week's Picture of the Week has been brought to you by our friends over at Flowers Garden Center and Deer Processing. Y'all get down there and check them out tomorrow, and you'll get to see all of their gardening and plant varieties that they have. Y'all get out there and get that garden planted and get your flowers just right, and maybe you'll get to go to a little fishing or a little turkey hunt and get that taken care of. Be sure to tell them thank you for everything they do for us here. Our first picture here, this is John Fisher with a nice bass that he caught at Lake Kissimmee on a recent trip. So congratulations to him on that fish. Very pretty fish there. Our next picture here, this is a 14-year-old Dallas Smith with a nice turkey that he shot on juvenile weekend being guided by his grandfather, none other than Mr. Gerald Smith. You guys have heard me talk about him a lot. And uh, I tell you, Gerald's a pretty good guide. I might have to get him to guide me on one here soon because he sure does put those grandkids on a lot of turkey and deer. Congratulations on that one, guys. Our next picture, this is Bob Moonpie Jackson, and this is a pretty neat story here, Bob. This is the first gobbler that he ever got. Now, he has lightly turkey hunted for over 20 years, just off and on, never been serious about it, finally got a chance to get a bird. What's neat about it is he bought some turkey loads 25 years ago. And that's what he's using. And he shot that turkey with a 25-year-old turkey load, said all it says is turkey load number four on it. So <laughs> he got the trick done, but congratulations. Congratulations on that one, Bob. Really nice bird, and uh, nothing like that first one. All right, here on in, this is four-year-old Samuel McKinney, and this is a nice uh, fish that he caught while fishing on his family's uh, farm pond in Kentucky this past week. So congratulations on that one, Samuel. Had pictures from him in the past. That, that young man there is going to grow up to be a fisherman now. He's exactly. been doing it for He's a happy old quite man a while right there. already. You see it, smile on his face. Y'all yeah. can send your pictures to us here, Southern Woods and Waters, 474 James Robertson Parkway, or better yet, get them to me on Facebook, and we'll get them here on the show just as quick as we can. And uh, that's a great time to remind you guys, I was supposed to have done it a while ago, but follow us on Facebook and keep up with us there. We'll let you know how our, our uh, hunts and uh, fishing trips are going. Keep you all up to date on that. And uh, also check us out at SWWTV.com. You can see all of our past episodes, find links to all of our great sponsors there, and keep up with us that way as well. Again, I've got Bobby Gentry here in the house with me tonight. We've been talking uh, smallmouth, kind of touched the surface of it a while ago, but now we're going to get a little bit more in depth. So, Bobby, I guess let's start right now with, with right now. So, this time of year, like you say, you've got a few fish spawning. You expect in the next few weeks it's really going to uh, happen. What are you doing right now to target uh, smallmouth, I guess, in particular, but just bass, you know, overall? Bass in home? general. Uh, right now, the largemouth bite has really been good. Uh, I'm finding a lot of those that really not fanning real heavy. I mean, we're finding some. Yeah. Uh, you can go out and catch quite a few largemouth backs of pockets, and the smallmouth have moved more so out on the flats. Yeah. Uh, there's, uh, there, like we, we've talked before, they don't always really spawn at the same time. You're going to have a few late spawners that's going to be up next to that deep water moving up on the flats. Mm -hmm. They'll be in some of those pockets, or I look for red clay banks, edges of grass where it's good spawning area. Mm -hmm. And live bait guys that's throwing the, the shad and the minnows or they're trolling a few of those uh -huh. along the rock walls and around the points uh, there you can pick them up like that if it's a windy day I'm catching a few on jerk baits there's there's really when you're talking April and May on Dale Hollow there's not really a wrong way to do it right just whatever's working that that particular whatever day. works for the conditions that day it depends on if we got a bluebird day it's going to be a tough day yeah yeah, because that water's so clear there. It's, it's really too. clear. It's a lot different than us guys that are used to fishing Priest and Old Hickory and Cordell. I mean, Del Holly, you can see a long way when it's clear. It's not been normal this year, uh, Brandon. It's been a lot dirtier all than the normal. Waters. Oh, I yeah, mean, everywhere we've I've, been. I've, call, I've called and talked <clears> to people all over the state of Tennessee and Kentucky, and even out in Arkansas, Missouri, I've had people calling me about how our water's doing. Us at Table Rock, we've got a lot in common with yeah. Del Holly. Yeah. And some of those guys have called me and they've said, Are y'all having the same problem that we are in, in keeping on your patterns? And, yeah. and they have. We went from zero water to where we just had one way at Del Hollow State Park to put a boat in. I mean, it was that low this winter and spring, mm -hmm. and you had no ramp left, you know, I mean, just oh, nothing. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, we had these major floods and these storms, you know, how yeah. bad they hit us. Yeah. And that changed, that changed fishing completely, 100 degree turn, yeah. man, and, and it's just, it's a, it's a hunt every day. 
but there's not a wrong way to do it. If you're enjoying your day, you're enjoying and having fun, if you you're figure, having fun, you can, you can get out and catch some fish right now. Yeah. The lake is very fishable. Are there any? I mean, I know it can vary. Any particular depth that you would start at right now, anyhow, as far as how deep you you would kind of focus on? I've I've got my old habits, and my old habits have changed a little bit over the years. But I'll generally put my boat in 25 foot of water, uh, throw up on gravelly uh, banks. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm finding grass beds, but I, I don't fish the real thick grass. I like the random patches of grass. Right. They're relating to that, and as long as it's a spawning type bottom. When we get 58 to 60, 61 degrees, these crawfish, I mean, they're yeah. they're doing their yeah. thing. 61 degrees, we've got shad spawning. Uh, guys that's working the points and the, the banks with live bait, there's been a few nice walleye in the 25 to 30 inch range caught. Yeah. I mean that's that's a meal Nobody right there. Nobody's gonna turn that down. Nobody's gonna <laughs> turn that down. So right now you've got such a variety of locations. Yeah. You know, to, and use your electronics if you've got the electronics, and you're going to find the bait and you're going to find the fish right there close by. Them. Yeah. And that's just this time of year the way it is. Explain just a little bit on what a spawning bottom is. You mentioned that. What what do you mean by a spawning bottom? I know sometimes you're looking at the bank and you're seeing a difference in say chunk rock versus gravel versus clay bank. What are you looking for as far as a spawning bottom? I'm looking for a soft bottom in general or small gravel. We don't really have, since we're a Holland Reservoir, we don't have, really have a pea gravel. We have a real fine shale mm -hmm. and it's somewhat like that. So they can take the tail and they can fan and they can make out a bed in that. But that, that silk bottom where they can yeah, move. Especially like you mentioned clay or yeah, something like that. Yeah, they can like move that. material around to actually get a place to bed, mm -hmm. you know. And I don't want to, you know, you don't want a solid rock bottom. You don't want right in the middle of, of, of a brush pile, really. They need light penetration yeah. for these eggs. Right. So I try to find a place that's open. And I use a lot of a lot of terminology as to transitions because transitions can mean a hundred different things when it comes to fishing. Mm -hmm. Transition be, can be between grass and just a slick flat, yep. nothing on it, no no vegetation, or transition from a clay and, and, and gravelly bottom to a bluff, a rock yep. wall, or to wood stumps yep. or cover. And you kind of that's kind of where you want to put your pattern together is what you're finding on that type of structure for the time of year you're there. Yeah. So if you find a fish in 15 foot of water on a stump, you're probably going to be looking at stumps. Exactly. In and they will spawn. A small mouth will spawn deeper than what a large mouth will. Right. At any particular average depth on that, would you say? I see a lot of them in 8, 10, 12 foot. Yes. Yeah. And again, on deep. Del Hollow, you get plenty of sunlight at 8, 10, 12 foot. Yeah. Exactly. You did that at Court of Hole, you know, exactly. you couldn't do that. Large mouth, they're always with their back out of the water, or they're really super shallow. That's mm -hmm. why you can really sight fish them. I know the northern fish, you, you sight fish spawning fish up there, they're in 12, 14, 15 foot of water. Well, we're somewhat similar to that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just, you just need light penetration for this, this yeah. hatch. And But now we have a lot of deeper spawning smallmouth in the, on Dale. And that's kind of what I look for is, is, is always close to deep water because our water's been up and down so much. Fish don't get big by being stupid. Right. That's my term. <laughs> you know, they're going to be, if you've got a lot of falling water, they're going to be close to deeper water. Yeah. So I like to find them mud flats and stuff that runs out next to a creek channel or a creek channel so bend. So it's got a quick drop off. Got a quick drop like off that. nearby, and that's yeah. what's real important. Yeah. Are you looking for any kind of uh, water temperature change uh, as much, you know, as far as that goes? If you're if you're in 60 degree water, do you see that as being better? If you could find some 64 degree water, let's say for example, is all is that very relative right now as far as four or five degrees temperature difference? I'm I just I hear more talk about water temperature uh, than about anything right now. Water temperature does play a big role in that. Uh, right now, if I can find 61 to 65 degree water temperature, that's where I've been getting more numbers of fish right now. Mm -hmm. I'm finding more in that. Now, your large mouth, they're up into that 67 to 70 degree yeah. water temperature. Your small mouth, though, and I've really got to separate the two because the small mouth love the cooler water. Mm -hmm. 
10 well, to 1. A northern, they're you know, a northern. Yeah. They're more like a, a perch or a walleye to yeah. me in, in techniques right. and method than it is fishing for either a Florida bass down on Chick or down in Florida, Georgia, yeah. or versus our largemouth we have here in Middle Tennessee yeah. and, and Southern Kentucky area. Yeah. They're, they're, they're all different. They're, they're all different. There's a lot different. of fish down there, and, and they all react different to temperatures and structure and, and current flows but uh and, and we'll get more into that guys it's time to go over and we're going to do this week's product of the week this week's product of the week is being sponsored by our friends over at caney fork outdoors you guys can check them out at cfoutdoors.com or get off at the center hill dam exit go down to the bottom of the hill and just before you turn right to go to the dam you'll see them right there at the big rock market they can get you outfitted and get you on the river and ready to go and catch some of those trout or small mouth down on the caney fork or whatever it is you want to get after but Bobby what do you have tonight as far as the product I know you got several things sitting up here tonight but which one we want to talk about right now I was very fortunate Brandon uh, to have a company a couple of companies and you know Kelly with K9 yeah yeah uh, Kelly was real good uh, talked to me a lot about some of the people he works with and I got hooked up with the guys down in Chick and some guys out in Western Kentucky the Ignite swim baits I never could keep a good amount of baits access to them when I really mm -hmm. needed them and they made a few colors for me that you normally couldn't find yeah and I'm gonna open one up here saw one over a while ago with your name on it so <laughs> well they, they picked out some of my favorites mm -hmm. and uh, uh, a lot of people I call this the old firecracker I don't know how well they can see this this has got that they're almost clear but that has really got a super flash in it when that's in the water. It's it's. It's got a lot of glitter in there too. Y'all can't see that on. Yeah, it's on uh, it's the screen. It's it's, it's really uh, hard to see that bait, but that is fantastic. And in the clear water, it almost looks like a bluegill when you pull that through the post spawn. Yeah. I uh, used to buy a Berkeley grub that was that color, and it was just a uh, Kalen's even made made that color. And yeah. I said, guys, could you run me a sample <laughs> of that? And there it is. They, they made it, and we've sold a lot of those yeah. this year. How can people get in touch with Ignite and get some of their own? There's a couple locations. If you're on Dale Hollow, you can find them at Obi River Market. has a, a good line of them in Salina, Tennessee. Uh, Glenn, uh, over at State Dock, has some there in mm -hmm. the store. And uh, I wanted to get this word out about some of these baits uh, that I'm using. I've got a website now. It's uh, Dale Hall of Guide Bait More. It's uh, it's yeah. really new yeah. on social media, and I'm getting a lot of good reports from Chickamauga, which that's where it, it, it's uh, where it originated. Yeah, again, yeah, yeah. yank them custom tackles down there, and them boys have been helping me. And if we're talking about Snowman with Chris Snow. Yeah. Uh, I push a lot of his products. Oh, man, he, I love him. I love him. That he's, spider he's, he's one of my He's favorites. a man when it comes yeah. to this, this kind of water, especially yeah. Center Hill. And it is. He comes up Dale Hall and he gets a day off. He said, i got to come up and try some of the stuff <laughs> up there. And, and, you know, I've got such a, a fine group of people to work with. And, you know, I can throw their name out there because, yeah. I, you know, it works. It's good. You use them every day. Yeah, so they you're, made you're a good word for them. They made a five-inch. Uh -huh. They make five. They actually make a six-inch swim bait, and this is this is their sexy shad colors. And you can see usually you can hold that bait up and see how that tail falls over. That's uh -huh. going to give you a good indication how much action you're going to have on eggs. that. And I've been using uh, uh, Yankum's got a a head for those, and also Snowman Chris Snow uh, makes a good screw lock head that goes yep. on these baits, Brandon. Okay. And my Gentry specials. They named them, I didn't, <laughs> but they wanted what colors I use, and uh, they threw that out there to me, which I was glad to see that. But I wanted a, a black, dark back on this, and I've done a lot of round structure. It's got a dark back with a, with a clear bottle uh -huh. bottom on this bait, and it's a smaller bait. And it just really works well yeah. for smallmouth and spotted bass on Dale. All right. Well, guys, we're going to get ready to take another quick break. When we come back, we're going to open the phone lines for you. So be sure to be ready to call in with your own questions and comments. We'll have some more Southern Woods and Waters.